Wonderful. Lord, I praise you. I thank you that uh, you've given me another opportunity and a privilege to be here today, Lord, to minister your word as I was led of your spirit. Now, Father, I pray that as this word goes forth, that you open the ears of the hearers, that those or that person specifically, that it's geared toward would receive what it is that you're saying to them. We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Over the last several days, um, I was asked if I would speak today. And I said, sure, I'll do that. And I think it was like a day or two notice. I wasn't 100% sure what direction to go with everything. And the Lord said to my heart, did you drop the ball? And so that's my question to you. Did you drop the ball? Now, there's a lot of implications with that. Um, you, you all are familiar with sports. You drop the ball, you, you done ruined it for everything. But when in the service of the Lord, if you drop the ball, it doesn't mean it's the end of the world. Um, there are several categories that that can fall into, whether you perceive that you've missed the call of God on your life. Some of you may think that you were called to minister, and, uh, but you didn't act in faith. You didn't get up, and you haven't done anything. And you looked in the mirror, and you looked at your watch, and you realized 40 years have come and gone, and you've done nothing, and you realize that in your mind that you've missed the call. And then there's other people who think that they have sinned too many times. They think they dropped the ball one too many times and God's done with you. And then uh, another category of people that Satan loves to torment is the ones that he has convinced them that they have committed the unpardonable sin. And they think that that's the end of that. So we're going to look at all these categories tonight. I personally, I don't fall into all of them, but I think that uh, there are elements there wherein I have truly believed that God was done with me. What do you do when you get into a place like that? That, my friend, is when you go back to the scriptures and you stand on what God says. You have to get to know the character, the nature, and the personality of God. Who is He? Who is Christ? What is His stance on things? What does He have to say about things? Throughout the Scriptures, many times, you're, time after time, He was like, if you repent, I'll forgive you. Time after time after time. First Chronicles, you know, if my people which are called by my name would humble themselves, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I'll hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin, I'll heal their land. Time after time after time. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Hosea, all the prophets of old, they proclaimed, look, you know, give up the sin and business, turn around and start seeking the Lord. Return to the Lord. There's another place that says that... Uh, he will forgive you. It was, um, uh, he will abundantly pardon. That was the, what I was just thinking of. He will abundantly pardon if you turn to him. You might say, well, Brother Ray, I don't know. Well, I don't know either, you know. There was a minister, um, Kenneth Hagin, he had said one time, senior, he had said one time he was dealing with a man in his congregation. He just, the man totally believed that he had just sinned one too many times and that God was done with him. And by the Spirit, Kenneth looked at him and said, well, I guess poor old Jesus didn't know what he, didn't really know what he meant when he had John write first, first John chapter 1, or yeah, first John uh, chapter 1, yeah, where it says, if you confess your sins, He's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. His call on your life, a lot of times, people put the cart before the horse. Yeah, there sure might be, there might still be a call in your life, but he's not done with you. I want to look at the, the scripture today. I want to look at Jeremiah 18. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, 
and there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was, making something at the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. And so he made it again into another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to make. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, says the Lord? Look, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. So yeah, you might have screwed things up one too many times. You may have missed your calling. But there's other aspects of this whole thing of your calling. Uh, some of you may have felt and believed that you were called to, to be a pastor or a teacher or evangelist or whatever the case ends up being. Some of you think that you were called to the mission field and you sat there like a bump on a log and did not act in faith. We know very well that the Word of God says that the just shall live by faith. That without faith it is impossible to please God. What I'm telling you today is this. It's not over for you. It's not over for you. It's not too late. You know, yeah, God, God always has, an, uh, I like to refer to the God as being frugal. He'll take something and he'll turn it around and use it for something else. If you think that you've thwarted God's plan for your life, he has other plans. It's not over until you're gone from this world. Then it is over. Until then, you can still get up and do something for God. All you have to say is, here I am. Will you forgive me for what I didn't do? Here I am. Will you open the door, Lord? I will go through it. That's the call of the Lord. That's the cry of the Lord's heart today. Some of you think that you've seen one too many times. Jesus told his disciples, they said to him, how many times in one day shall we forgive a brother who sins against us? So seven times. And the Lord said to them, huh, no, 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 T seven times 70. And it's not a literal number. It's not a 490 times in one day. It's not a literal number. It is a figurative number. But the implication is this. As many times as somebody sins against us, in one day we are to forgive them. God is not unjust. If he has asked us to do that, he himself will most surely do it. He will abundantly pardon, but you've got to go to him and ask him. You know, one time uh, many years ago, when I, after I first got filled with the Holy Ghost, the Lord gave me a vision and, uh, as I was sitting in church one Sunday, and I saw in this vision a, the, a blue sky, light blue, and in the word was written Africa in white letters is uh, written, and uh, I thought, okay, great, I'm going to Africa. And so I looked for every opportunity that would come up, whether missions or whatever else. And there was one opportunity that did present itself. Now this is probably only a few years after that uh, vision where a man came into a weld shop where I was working wanting these metal plates cut. And uh, they're of odd designs, trapezoids mainly, you know, at, at slight angles. And I asked the man, I said, well, what are you doing with all these plates? He goes, well, we're going to weld them together and make uh, concrete block molds. That, uh, and I said, and I thought that to myself, I thought, this, that, that's kind of strange here in the U.S. We just buy them by the pallet load, you know, so I thought that was kind of strange. And uh, so I pressed him a little further, and he said it was for a mission trip in Africa. Well, I'm telling you right then and there, you know, because I believed that, perceived that God had called me to go to Africa, bells and whistles were going off, lights and sirens going off in my head. I thought, this is it. So I asked him, what does a person have to do to get uh, on this mission trip? And he said, well, there are uh, X amount of spots. They were all filled. He said, however... We always have a backup roster, and there's always somebody that calls off. And so um, I went ahead and I said, well, you just go ahead and put me on there. I'll go. And I was the first one in that, on that page. And so we had a couple months, and as time was ticking along, I was getting things in order. But nothing came to fruition, and I got down to the bare wire, and I said to the man, I said, well, where are we at today? And he said, 
you know, it's really amazing. He said, I have never had somebody not cancel. And he said, but that's where we're at. Nobody has canceled. So it was the first time ever in any of the trips that he had ever sponsored that nobody canceled. And so whenever I was realizing that I wasn't going to Africa, I thought, well, I missed it. Something happened. What happened, Lord? Maybe that wasn't you. But when you read through your scriptures and you read through uh, Revelation chapter 3 and you find where he says, uh, he opens a door that no man can close and he closes doors that no man can open. God shut that door. And there's a number of reasons and we can go into a debate on that. But ultimately, was I ready? Was I ready? Or was it something that he was telling me that which was to come, but the time wasn't just yet. As it stands, it took about, uh, uh, I want to say about 30 years for that door for me to go to Africa opened up. And when, I, when it did, there were tremendous things that happened over there. Um, casting devils out of people, ministering to ministers. I was... God had sent me, actually sent me over there to save a man's life. And I sit back in awe and wonder, you know. There were many things that led up to it. On the way, the day or two before, the, the assistant pastor that was supposed to go along with me, well, I was going with him, if you will. That's, that's the correct uh, way of putting it. I was going with him. Um, we had to, the day before we flew, we had to go do COVID tests. Well, we had to drive two hours one way over to Pottstown, Pennsylvania, which is over by Philadelphia. And he showed positive for COVID, so he couldn't fly. Well, we each had time slots to speak during this minister's conference in Zambia. And that was on a Tuesday, I believe. I had to get everything in order to... Uh, fill in not only my time slots for speaking but also fill in for his time slots so then I needed more messages to speak to these ministers. So I'm going from here into a country that I had never been into. Um, I had heard of the man in charge over there, the one uh, senior pastor, but I didn't know what he looked like. I got his contact information I had no idea. I didn't know anything. I didn't know nothing. And so I wandered off into the Zambia on my own, as it were, on my own. But God opened that door. It wouldn't have just happened overnight. You see, there's a lot of things in my background that helped me to get to the place where I could deal with situations like that. I had uh, been in the Marine Corps. I worked as a civilian contractor. I was in Iraq and Afghanistan. When I traveled over there, um, this is back 2008-2010, I had no idea where I was going over there. But I became a global traveler, traveling by myself, going into the far reaches of wherever. And so I had experience in those things. There was a lot of experience, a lot of things that I learned during that time frame. Uh, for example, it, for me to go from one fob to another over in uh, Afghanistan, you could find yourself sitting in an air terminal for days waiting on a helicopter. For days. And so you had to learn patience. You had to learn to just be forbearing and just be adaptable to your environment. Be able to handle it, be able to change, be able to accept what was going on around you. And then furthermore, looking at uh, my own experiences, there were a lot of other things I had to learn. Um, for example, I'm a supervisor, and so being able to take, care, take control of situations. I got all that under my belt before God opened the door and before I went to Zambia. I had been studying for the ministry at one time under in a different denomination. Uh, we don't have a denomination here at Jesus is Lord. We believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. That's it. 
Without him, no one gets to heaven. We don't have all the strings attached. The only string that we do have is, what does the Bible say? That's the string. But I was studying to be a minister under another denomination. I was three quarters of the way through it. And uh, I wrote about it in one or two of my books. But the continual beating coming from behind the pulpit, all in the name of good preaching, was really malicious digging directed at each people in the, you know, some of the people in the congregation. I seemed to be, had a target on my head. To the point where spiritually I was broken and I became nothing. It got so bad, in fact, I remember crying as I left one of the services one night. And I said, you know, God, I don't want to hear one more word that comes out of that pastor's mouth. And I quit going to the church. I left. I walked away. I was three quarters of the way to getting ordained through that ministry, and I just walked away. We see things like, from our perspective, like, for example, uh, we see that to be a minister, an effective minister, we have to have that paper on the wall. But what are you really learning when you do that? What are you really learning? What are they teaching you? Are they teaching you man's ways? Are they teaching you what uh, the denomination believes in? Are they teaching you what somebody else thinks? What are they teaching you? So you might say that you missed your calling to be a minister or whatever, did you? And if you know in your heart that you missed it, the Lord's saying to you today, I'm not done with you. You see, the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. He hasn't forgotten. But what you need to do is take a new look at it. Get up from where you're at. Accept that call on your life. Repent for not moving in faith. And by faith, get up and start following through with something. You can say, well, I don't know where to begin. Well, you can begin in the Word. You need to get the root of the Word in your heart. Thy Word, O Lord, I have hidden my heart that I might not sin against you. How do you know what God's will is? You get it in, the word, in His Word. You see, the Spirit will never go against His Word. And sometimes people, they get following around in their own imaginations, thinking that they're called to be something great. But you have to ask, you know, did God actually call you? Um, and, and when I say this, I say it with a grain, I say it lightly, so, you know, don't take it too serious about what I'm saying here, this next part. I honestly believe that there's a lot of denominations, a lot of people in a lot of churches who are standing behind the pulpit who have absolutely no clue who Jesus really is. They feel that they had a call in their life and they're following through with it. Well, I praise God they're moving in faith for that aspect of it. But what are they actually teaching and preaching? How are they actually living? There is a time whenever you can miss the call of God on your life, and there is a time whenever God can close the door on you because he's just tired of waiting around. But I'm telling you right now, if you're sitting here and you're listening to me today, if you're listening to me, he hasn't turned your back on you. And that falls into the next category I was going to say something about, you know, the unpardonable sin. I encountered a man one time who thought that he actually did commit the unpardonable sin. He was tormented day and night for many months, for years, for six, seven years, I think he said. See, he was involved in the drugs, and one of his relatives was doing drugs with him, and the man overdosed and died. And he blamed himself. He felt that, and this is one of those things where Satan loves to torment prisoners and everything else, just convincing them that they've committed murder, and that it's the unpardonable sin, and it's not. Paul had murdered many Christians before he started writing the New Testament. Look what God did to him. He took that glob of clay and re re made it into a usable pot. 
So I had the opportunity to pray with that man, and I was just shared with him, and I said, if there's anything in your heart at all towards God, then you have not committed the unpardonable sin. If you're listening to this message, you have not committed the unpardonable sin. If you truly committed the unpardonable sin, you would want nothing to do with listening to a message. You would want nothing to do with the Bible. You would want nothing to do with Jesus. And then there's the aspect of sinning too many times. I've sinned too many times. God won't forgive me. God won't hear me. I've blown it one too many times. I dropped the ball one too many times. Well, maybe you did drop it one too many times, but here's the idea, you know. If that's where you're at, stop it. Stop having a pity party. Yeah, that's right. Stop having a pity party. Get up, stand up, shake the dust off yourself, reach down and pick that ball back up. That's what the Lord is saying to you today. It's not too late until you're out of this world, until you're gone into eternity, then it's too late. But while you still have life left in you, the Lord is saying today is the day of salvation. Now is the appointed time. Now is when you have to stand up by faith and start serving Him by faith. The just shall live by faith. I can honestly say when I look at this, you know, look at my notes here, the missed calling and sin too many times, and I found myself many times. There's many times I know that there are things I should have done and did not do. And I just felt absolutely wretched afterwards. I was like, God, I knew I should have done something and didn't. I remember such a time. There was a lady at the rest area. By the spirit, I knew that her ACL was torn. And um, I froze. It's like I got stage fright. I didn't even move. And when I left there, there was another opportunity for me to pray for her, and I didn't do it. I know how I just felt so miserable. And I, oh, yeah, I repented. But I had to get past my flesh, my feelings. When you truly repent, you have to lay aside how you feel about something and trust Jesus. I got over that hurdle, and it was on to the next one. You know, there was a section of the scriptures that Paul wrote. He said, the, th the things that I should do, I don't. The things that I should not do are the very things that I do, a wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from the bondage of this flesh? But he goes on to say, I praise God for our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm talking to you today about dropping the ball. Did you drop the ball? Did you blow up on your neighbor when you shouldn't have? Repent. Go back and say, will you forgive me? Did you know that you had a call in your life and you didn't do anything about it? Now you're getting up in your years. It's not too late. The Lord is saying to you today, it is not too late. Just say, here I am, Lord. Here I am. I know I missed it. Here I am, starting right now. I surrender to you. Have your way in me. Will you forgive me? He'll take you, and he can use you in another area. So what if you were called to be some great big TV evangelist preacher, and you didn't, you didn't act in faith, and you passed it by, and it passed you by? Maybe that will never come back again. But the Lord's saying to you today, I'm not done with you. You see, the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. God's not going to give you a calling on your life and then turn around and take it back. 
doesn't work that way. But what he can do is use you in another area. Say you were to be a, some have some great healing ministry and you just blew it. He can take you and use you as an evangelist. He can take you and use you for however you want. The God that created all of heaven, all of earth, all that in them is, powers, dominions, principalities, things seen, things unseen, terrestrial, celestial, everything. He is the same God that created it, created you. The Bible says he, he creates in you the desire to do of His will and His good pleasure. He creates the desire in you for you to do His will and His good pleasure. The Lord's saying to you today, it's not too late. He's saying, come on up a little bit higher. It's not too late. Look up here, he's saying. Look up, look up. Get your eyes out of the gutter. Pick the ball up. Get, stand back up. Shake the dust off yourself. It's not too late. Even as Jeremiah went to the potter's house, he's the potter, we're the clay. Is it his best? He, yeah, God wants his best for you. But he wants the best for himself, too, through you. But God is also frugal. He will not just throw you away, either. I know what it feels like whenever you feel that you missed the mark. I know what it feels like in the flesh when you drop the ball. I know the guilt. I know the desperation. I know the feelings. I've been there. But the Lord's saying to you today, repent. He can use you somewhere else. Don't worry about it. Just pick the ball back up, get your eyes on Him, and start today. Start afresh. Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things such as you know not. The gifts and calling of God are without repentance. There's so much more that can come and he, he wants to show it to you. He wants to reveal that to you. Seek him today. 1 John chapter 1. If you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. God is a God of peace, a love, a mercy. He's a forgiving God because of what Christ has done. Anytime there's condemnation that comes along and just doesn't let up, it's not God. Neither is there condemnation now to them who believe. Well, God's saying to you today, pick the ball up. Whatever you're calling, whatever you feel that you missed, there's a lot you can do. Start a prayer meeting. Start a home Bible study. Start something. Do something. Go door to door. He who wins souls is wise. Surrender yourself to the Lord. Ask Him, what's next? Well, Father, I have delivered this message today. I have poured it out. I have given them what it is that you've laid on my heart. Whoever it was geared for, I pray that you make that word alive in them. That you're not the God that's ready to throw somebody out. You're not around the corner waiting to hit them with a ball bat if they mess up. But you're the loving Father who is standing there with Christ at your right hand, welcoming them back into your fold. And all they have to do is say, will you forgive me? You can still use them. You can still use that one. There's still hope. Help them today. Help them and draw them. Draw them by your spirit. 
In Jesus' name I pray and ask. Amen.